Hello, Burleson Adventist Church. I hope you're having a wonderful week so far, and I hope you had a wonderful weekend. You know, every day this week that goes by leaves us one less to the Sabbath, which is really exciting because this weekend is a special Sabbath. This weekend, we get to celebrate the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and I am so excited to be able to celebrate that with you, although it will be online. Nevertheless, we will be together, right? So I'm excited for that. And I want to share a little bit of hope with you uh, today. 1 Corinthians 6.20 reminds us that you have been bought with a price. You know, this is an important concept, important idea. You have been purchased. You are no longer yours. In other words, whoever says that I am a Christian, whoever claims Jesus as their Savior, is someone who no longer owns themselves. They have been purchased by Jesus Christ. You are his property. And I got to reading something that really intrigued me. It was about the kalah. That is the Hebrew word for bride. Now, in the Hebrew culture, when a couple gets married, um, the bridegroom will go to the bride's home. He'll go to her village. He'll meet the parents. They'll make arrangements. And they will make a covenant right then and there. Now, that's not the end of it. That's not when he gets to go home with her. He ends up leaving all by himself, leaving the bride, the Kala, with her parents. So the bridegroom goes back to his house and the bride stays with her parents and until the marriage takes place. And that can be any number of amount of time. I mean, for Jacob, it was seven years and then seven years until the marriage, right? So it, it can vary. The, the, the bridegroom has to make arrangements. He's got to get things prepared. And so whatever that entails. But here's what's happening. The bride, the Kala, she is at home. She's with her family. And she still does her chores. She still has her responsibilities. She's still living at home. She's still going about her day. She still lives in the same tent. Her circumstances, realistically, haven't changed at all. She's still in the same exact environment. And yet everything for her has changed. Do you know why? Because she's now the bride. She's now the Kala. There is, she is part of a covenant relationship with her bridegroom. While they haven't actually had the ceremony of marriage, they are married. They're together. And what's really amazing is the bridegroom will at some point come back and, and get her. And they will be married and they'll spend the rest of their lives together. And it reminds me of the story of Jesus, right? He came and he established a covenant with us. And he left. And right now he is preparing that dwelling place, that, that home for us for all eternity. And the Bible tells us that he will come again. In fact, in Revelation 19 and verse 7, this is what the Bible tells us. This is the hope that we have, church, for all of those who say, hey, I belong to Jesus. This is what the Bible says. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. Church, Jesus is coming again. The bridegroom is coming again. And while our circumstances that we're in are nuts, they're crazy, they seem out of control, we know that Jesus is coming to take us home again. The question in Revelation 19.7 is, for those that make themselves ready, for the wives that make themselves ready. So what are we doing? Well, I want to encourage you, church, now is the time to make ourselves ready. Now is the time to be spending more time in Bible study, to be spending more time in prayer, to be sharing our, our love of Jesus with more people, either on Facebook, Zoom, phone calls, whatever the case may be. Let your love of Christ flow freely from you because you are the Kala. You are the bride. So here it is. Don't forget, Jesus loves you. So do I. We'll see you this Sabbath. God bless you.